seals in combat was the greatest honor of my life. I'm working with the best of the best of human potential in serving my country. My father was a SEAL, and so I literally grew up in the SEAL teams. I had that around me the whole time I was growing up. I didn't know what it was when I was a child, but I knew I wanted to be like my dad. He was like Batman to me, you know? Um, so I wanted to be Batman, you know? <laughs> So I, I went and did that. And, and just to work with all those amazing talents, it, it was the, the most powerful thing that I, I think I've experienced in my life. Never again will I have that level of human potential, you know, working with me, ever. The amount of training that goes into it, the mentality to be able to withstand that type of training for those prolonged periods of time to do the type of missions that we do as SEALs is just, it can't be described. They're brothers. They're brothers. And, and they made my job so easy as a leader because they were so capable. I love those men that I was working with. I had a hard time for a long time when I was, you know, recovering from combat-related stress due to guilt. Guilt that the men that went before me, some of them didn't come back. In particular, my swim buddy. The swim buddy is a, is a guy that goes through SEAL training with you. And he was killed in Iraq. And that hit me hard. Like, we've lost a lot of SEALs in combat, but that one was by far the, the, the hardest blow for me. I had this guilt, like, like I hadn't done enough. I hadn't, I hadn't given enough of myself that I look back in retrospect that at the time I felt like death was the only thing that would be enough. I couldn't stop my mind from going. It was like I came back and I was just like, Ugh. you know, I was charged, you know, like the silence was literally deafening. It was just like, I, I couldn't sleep. I was literally up for four days at a pop. For some reason, they gave me amphetamines to help me sleep. They had a psychiatrist come to the command. I went and saw this guy as one of the first guys that, you know, went and saw the psychiatrist. But that wound up with me being on more medications. I was on Vicodin, I was on Adderall, I was on Prozac, I was on, I don't know the name of the sleeping pills. I was on this anti-anxiety medication to offset the, <laughs> the effects of the antidepressants. And then, and then they kept changing the antidepressants because of the effects. I, I didn't know what was going on, you know, I just, I just kept doing what they were telling me to do. Heart's racing, I'm sweating, and like, I felt like I was looking through a straw, you know? And I'm standing there and like, the students came up to me and they're like, are you okay, chief? And I was like, they're like, you look gray. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm dying. I'm just gonna go get it over with. Literally, I was like, oh, finally, you know? So I went and laid down and uh, the corpsman that we had out there was just like, oh, what do you want me to do? I was like, nothing, <laughs> nothing. You know, just leave it, leave it. Just picture up like a, like a, a ear of corn, the husk on an ear of corn with no corn in it. It's all dried up in the back of a black car in the middle of the summer, you know, and just brittle and hollow and absolutely devoid of any caring for anything. But you can't even like, shower you can't shower you can't even like and that's not like it wasn't depression i can't even call it depression because it was something so much more abysmal than that no wonder no wonder men are killing themselves women are killing themselves because these pills have everybody depleted i felt like my soul was gone like I had no like I was just a body 
like with nothing in it. I knew after I was almost killed by pills that the stuff that the psychiatrists were doing weren't, wasn't working, obviously. Unless, of course, you know, they were trying to kill me, which... Hmm. They don't have any idea what they're doing, or they do, and they're doing it very well. You know, if they're trying to kill our military, if they're trying to kill off any voice or anybody that doesn't fall in line, you know, they want a, they want a bunch of zombies that they can, you know, easily control, then it's working. The thing that got me off of them was, your shit's not working. And I am so sick of seeing you. You telling me to do something, I know it's, I knew at that point, it, it's in, it, it almost killed me. It's the only time that anybody ever tested my hormonal levels was when I got out. And I paid for it myself. And that's when things started to work. And now, after I've come through this gauntlet, <laughs> I, I can see more clear. I can see that there was a bigger purpose than combat. Combat was a necessity for me to do what it is I do now with Vital Warrior. This system that I use with Vital Warrior is a, is a powerful non-pharmaceutical system for hormonal rebalancing. So you can start relaxing, you can start detoxifying, you can start increasing your health. Start to, once you sleep, everything else starts to come back into focus. When I sit there and I watch my brothers suffer, I watch them. I just came back from watching this and I watch how much pain they're in and, and how they try to cope with it and how they try to deal with it. To the veteran, Vital Warrior is the answer to the question that you've been asking. Letting them know, kind of like a lighthouse, you know, letting them know that there's land close by. If they're seeing that, then they know that there's a place that they can drive that, kind of drive that broken ship into and, and they'll be safe. We can repair everything there. We blog, reach out to them through the website. We get information out. We just try broadcasting. That is why I'm still alive, is to fight this new fight. That is my purpose, is to fight this fight, to know and inspire them that there is another way other than the pharmaceutical path. Because that's never a way. That, that will never be a way. The psychiatry and the pharmacology that they irresponsibly exact upon our military is a direct subversion of what their true power is. That they're taking away pill by pill.